One of, if not the biggest story so far in 2024 broke earlier today, and it is both interesting that it comes out today of all days, but then also, if you take in totality several events that have transpired over the past few years, it makes perfect sense why things played out exactly like they did. Gina Carano has officially filed a lawsuit against Lucasfilm and Disney for her discriminatory firing back in February of 2021, nearly three years ago, she has been holding on to this, mustering her forces, getting all of her ducks in a row. But why drop this right now? Right, like right now of all things? Well, you guys probably remember the year that Lucasfilm and Disney had in 2023. And oh, what's happening tomorrow specifically? All right, the first big invest investor call, which is going to be one of many terrible ones for Disney in 2024. Oh, so they're going to be in the news cycle heavy heavy tomorrow and any opportunity any opportunity that any of these other rags some of which we'll be citing here very shortly by the end of the video are going to also have the opportunity to say and then on top of the uh, millions hundreds of thousands of subscribers that disney plus lost one of the biggest stars formerly a disgruntled controversial however they want to put it as long as gina carano's name and this lawsuit is mentioned it's just going to end up bolstering her claims. And normally, when we talk about lawsuits on the channel, it is something where you just look at it and go, yeah, this is going to hold absolutely no weight. And especially when it comes to a defamation claim, those are exceptionally difficult to prove. But quite frankly, Gina's got a really good case, but she is going against one of the most litigious, if not the most litigious company in the entire world. So does she have the forces to back up her claims? Actually, she does. And like I said, there are so many other forces, pun not intended, at play with this singular event right here. And it all kind of makes sense that it's playing out exactly like this. So let's get to the release from Gina instead of reading somebody else's, you know, stupid secondhand information. I'll go right to the source on this one. Today is an important day for me. I'm filing a lawsuit against Lucasfilm and Disney. After my 20 years of building a career from scratch and during the regime of former a Disney CEO Bob Chapek, Lucasfilm made the statement on Twitter terminating me from The Mandalorian. Gina Carano is no longer employed by Lucasfilm, and there are no plans for her to be in the future. Nevertheless, her social media posts denigrated people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. And what are we talking about specifically? Well, we all remember the oft-mentioned deleted Instagram story where she compared the, the Republicans to Jews in the Germany in 1950. No, it's like, no, or 1945, not 54. Dyslexia kicking in for a second. But, well, the screenshot and the Twitter post did, in fact, end up getting yeeted. Uh, we got we got different ways to back this up, obviously. So Gina Carano has reportedly been fired from the Mandalorian for a social media post about Jewish people during the Holocaust. That's that's what everybody knows out there. That's the meme that has permeated the world. Meanwhile, the truth is something completely and totally different when you have the screenshot of the story. But everybody who's out there, Din Djarin culture, oh, the Djarin culture, right? So somebody who's clearly on the side of Disney, somebody who out there tweeting fire Gina Carano, the hashtag that ended up spurning Disney into action to fire her from the Mandalorian, something that again, you know, she had an active production, there was no other reason to believe that she would be fired from season three of the Mandalorian, and then also, ooh, she had another project very much in development with Rangers of the New Republic, you know that whole very difficult bar to clear when it comes to a defamation claim, she has stuff in writing from Disney, their discriminatory firing practices that are being alleged in this lawsuit, Still haven't seen the letter of it specifically we'll see that probably in the next few days obviously and we'll be able to take a closer look at it but now it's going to be going to a judge because okay exactly what they were alleging that okay um nevertheless her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable well here's the post did she do that jews were beaten in the streets and not by nazi soldiers but by their neighbors even by children because history is edited most people today don't realize that they uh, oh to get to that point uh, where soldiers could easily round up thousands of jews 
Jews. The government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How does any... Oh, how does that... Oh, how is any of that different from hating someone for their political views? Um, what about that is denigrating anything? Um, what about that is, by the letter of Disney, a cultural or religious denigration? doesn't seem to pass the test on that one but but of course there are other things that they were taking into a totality of events of course nothing could be further from the truth and the truth is i was being hunted down from everything i posted to every post i liked because i was not in line with the acceptable narrative of the time oh yeah because if you want to go ahead and take umbrage with using holocaust imagery with some of the ways that you are painting you know, some people in the united states why didn't Pedro Pascal or anybody else under the Disney, Lucasfilm, Marvel, Pixar umbrella face a similar reckoning? Oh, right, right, because Gina Carano votes differently every four years. Big shock on that one. I was not in line with the acceptable narrative of the time. My words were consistently twisted to demonize and dehuman or dehumanize me as an alt-right wing extremist. What was being reported? Oh, she was being very hateful. She was signing up with those bad guys from Germany from the 1930s and 40s. When we just looked at the simple Instagram story that was there that has long since been forgotten, but thankfully hasn't been lost the time thanks to screenshot features. And that just goes and kind of proves that Gina did nothing wrong, so oopsie daisy. That kind of proves her claim that her words have been twisted and manipulated to tell a completely different story than what she was presenting. Kind of seems to bore out some truth now, doesn't it? It was a bullying smear campaign aimed at silencing, destroying, and making an example out of me. But where did that all come from to begin with because okay Gina Carano was loved the character of Cara Dune on the Mandalorian you know one of the bright spots of that terrible show she was one of the most popular if not the most popular characters on that show okay even outshining and then you have to take a look at some of the merch sales but I thought Cara Dune was right up there like right behind Baby Yoda maybe even surpassing Mandalor or, yeah Mando himself then within an instant, because a couple of creeps on social media decided to tweet out hashtag fire Gina Carano, she was gone like that. And the entire industry, as a result, ended up blanket banning her because it's not like that was the only thing that she had going for her. Hell, she had a very bur burgeoning Hollywood career. She was kind of the go-to. And you have to think about the time this was because this was all the way back 2020, 2021, where, you know, the whole girl boss thing was really, really arguably at its apex. We're kind of dealing with the downslope of that, at least I'm hoping. But she was one of the more believable people to pull that stuff off because most of them okay if you got amelia clark out there trying to perfect another girl boss tactic and killing another franchise it doesn't really hold the weight of a former strike force mma champion it's like okay who if you got if you got this idea where you're gonna have this big action thriller where you're gonna have some chick tackle a 250 pound six and a half foot tall guys okay we're gonna have jennifer lawrence try to play the part she is the first female action star ever or are you gonna have a legit badass in gina carano that was the thought at the time and that's why her business was booming but then in an instant gone like that the thing is i never even used aggressive language we read the post specifically but what about the other ones we'll get to those very shortly i shared a thought-provoking quotes pictures memes and occasionally i used my own words not with aggression but with respect and occasionally comedy to keep the mood light in dark times what else is she referring to on that one well of course the whole transphobic twitter stunt ah, you got the alphabet mafia mad at you in the fall of 2020 wow imagine how all of this stuff snowballs like i said this is a big confluence of events for disney and then ultimately this result right here because of their ill-advised firing of gina and then also this coming to fruition a lot of different seeds that were planted years and years ago finally blooming at the most opportune time that listening to the freaks on social media what is driving all of their business decision and has for a very long time might have bore out some short-term benefit but in the long term Oh, it's going to be the downfall of your company. But, but what was this transphobic Twitter stunt? Uh, did you hear about this? Well, yeah, likely you have because 
it was nothing at all because Chrono, in response to uh, fans, fans, activists, or as I think Mahler likes to refer to them as, as tourists, they just come along to different fandoms and then just vandalize the property that, you know, actual fans grow to love and cultivate. That's why you need to gatekeep everything that you love. Urging her to share her support for the trans community, something that Disney may or may not have had a mandate on high from take a look at some of my previous gina carano specifically the kathleen kennedy videos where she has a long ass twitter post completely and totally exonerating i'm sorry excoriating kathleen kennedy on those issues like i said if you've been paying attention to things this this story in total or i'm sorry in totality very much makes sense even if you've been caught completely blindsided if you're just simply observing this in a vacuum there's been a lot building up to this but yes she, she mocked the trans community for posting beep bop boop in lieu of sharing pronouns that's the comedy that got all the freaks uh, totally bent out of shape that's it that's it well some commentators jumped to the actress's defense her critics funny how they put some commentators and then her critics like trying to say that the outsiders are the commentators running defense for her that's like 95% of people who think that all of this pronoun hysteria is absolute nonsense. I think it's probably even higher than that. It's just this hyper minority that is overtly vocal because they have nothing better to do with their life and they're miserable people. But they also have a disproportionate amount of influence in all of these businesses, which are now reaping all the seeds that they sowed all those years ago. Hmm, interesting. Yes, her critics argued that she, the move simply mocked trans people by putting beep, bop, boop in her pronoun, or in her bios, having a laugh. It's so funny, right? Whenever there's a forced inclusion of pronouns, something that was, you know, a hot button topic in regards to Starfield, the video game that launched last year, and that, oh my god, oh, that, that as guy, that bald British guy, he was big mad about the Starfield and the pronouns, not knowing the context on that. Funny how things spread online by a bunch of weirdos and never want to get the full context on things. Oh, he was just big mad about pronouns because that's what he said in his rant. No, that was after like eight hours of experiencing that absolutely awful game, which is now going to PS5. Or <laughs> nobody can play it. It'll get tens of sales over there. I've got another video on that coming out very shortly. But the defense for the pronoun inclusion for Starfield was, oh, it doesn't matter all that much. Why are you so mad about that? But funny, but funny, if pronouns don't matter that much, why do you insist we all capitulate to your demands? Very strange. Look with your own eyes at what I posted and ask yourself, for example, where did I compare Republicans to the Jewish people in the Holocaust? I didn't. Ask yourself why they are calling me a racist. Was there any merit behind that or a history of it whatsoever? She participated in sports throughout her entire life, still has a foothold in that community. What, she just had this very heartbreaking post for the recently departed Carl Weathers go up, who last time I checked was very black, by the way. So I don't even know where that claim at all comes from. That one's just another one of those lists of ists and phobes whenever the you know freaks on social media want to go out there and ruin your life. They'll just go ahead and throw that over the top. Yes, a look at why I was called a transphobe. We just did. Uh, for uh, making droid noises from Star Wars. Yeah, she was cast as one of the most popular characters. They want you to put pronouns and if you don't, oh, there's going to be repercussions from Lucasfilm. Something that Gina alluded to recently, or I'm sorry, in one of her previous posts that I covered in a video was a mandate from Kathleen Kennedy because, you know, she can't mandate, you know, proper script writing or good storytelling, but she sure as hell can mandate that you need to go ahead and bow down to the mob by including pronouns. And she thought, well, my most, the, my biggest role so far to date is a part of Star Wars and what's one of the most iconic visages from Star Wars? Droids. Mob, they make noises. Beep, bop, boop. That's going to be funny. People have a laugh at that one but didn't realize that oh boy that ended up kicking the very vocal minority hornet's nest that was obviously directed to online bullies and did not in any way denigrate transgender people yeah exactly like this wasn't a denigration again the crowd that it doesn't matter just do what we say because if you don't then it's really gonna matter just kind of shows the hypocrisy on display uh were were my questions about masks lockdowns and forced vaccines okay to ask and push the subject into the light i don't have a visual for this but you can go and take a look at what she posts on instagram like a 14 year old girl but she has a lot of do not comply with her arms crossed like that it's like your car dune you're not being ahsoka but she has don't comply on there and it's like yeah 
that was kind of bog standard rhetoric at the time in 2020, 2021, where they were trying to get you to wear the face diaper all the time. So yeah, okay, that what's what's wrong with that? And forcing people to do uh, what they don't want to. I thought that it was supposed to be normally a rallying cry on that side of the aisle is my body, my choice. It's very funny how they don't want to have equal applications of that, even though they're opposed or I'm sorry, they're supposed to be the side that wants equality. Oh, no, sorry. They've shifted that to equity because they realize that, wow, like we're really easily exposed as being hypocrites. But anyways, I'll continue. Uh, should uh, we have been allowed to publicly uh, discuss those topics at the time without being harassed or censored? Absolutely. Yeah. And thankfully, thankfully, things have become because of vocal individuals with large platforms such as Gina, like other people out there, we can at least have some conversations, more so on places like Rumble, and now thanks to certain people, we are now allowed to have those conversations. Sorry, I got distracted because... Final Fantasy VII State of Play is going on right now. Please be good. Anyways, going back to this. Hollywood says they support female representation and equal rights, but we also know that they're obvious hypocrites. But why uh, then were my male co-stars permitted to speak without harassment, Pedro Pascal, and re-education courses on termination, but uh, I was uh, not afforded the same right to exercise my freedom of speech? Oh, no, you were. You were just disproportionately subjected to a 40-person zoom call struggle session very strange how that only happens for one side of the discourse artists uh, do not sign away our rights as american citizens when we enter into employment i've spoken to all my co-stars since i was fired and there is nothing but care and kind words between us i respect their right to free speech and i do not think oh and i do not have to think uh, the same for on every issue uh, to be their friend and i work with them and i know they feel the same towards me Good to know, good to know, because not too many of them came out in support of Gina. Carl Weathers was one of the very few that did, and the rest of them, just including stupid Bill Burr, is supposed to be, dude, a free speech, uh, cancel culture, stupid, dude, dude. Even had a half-hearted, yeah, it's kind of stupid that she got fired, but I hope uh, Star Wars and Lucas, for those paychecks are real good, dude, and it gives me time away from my insufferable wife. Not a Bill Burr fan, by the way. But a couple of months ago, Elon Musk tweeted out, if you have been fired for using the X plat or for using the platform X for exercising your right to free speech. Hmm, interesting. Uh, he would like to offer those people legal representation. Hmm, who has been very public in their criticization of Disney recently? Oh, Elon Musk. Like I said, if you've been paying attention, this makes a lot more sense. Quite the noble offer. But never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that anyone would take on my case against Lucas Disney film. Still, I, I did respond back. I think I qualify. Y'all remember that quote that was out there? Talked about it as well. And then that also accompanied one of the long posts from Gina on Twitter. And thousands of people agreed. But I did not expect anything. To my surprise, a few months ago, I received an email from a lawyer who had been hired by X to look into my story and many others. It turns out that after sending them as much information as I could gather these past few months, now my lawyers and X believe wholeheartedly in my case, and we are moving forward. I would like to express my deepest gratitude and thank you to Elon Musk and X for giving me the opportunity to bring my case to light, and Elon Musk has responded a couple of different times, specifically to that tweet right there, and please let us know if a Oh, if you would like to join the lawsuit against Disney, and then also tweeting out supplemental material... Like this one, the anonymous, an anonymous source, sorry, just sent me this from Disney. It is mandatory institutionalized racism and sexism. Oh boy, so we got standards, on-screen representation, creative leadership, below the line, all talking about DEI requirements. Not talking about people of talent. We're talking about arbitrary quotas in order to, ooh, appease the mob that is killing your company. Feel free to read through this at your own leisure. It's just, it's the same old stuff. We need to have 50% of, of minority groups represented because that's been working out so well for your company previously. Good job. Continue to double down, you freaks. As for me, 
I would love to pick up where I left off and continue my journey of creating and participating in storytelling, which is my utmost passion and everything I have worked so hard for. It has been difficult for me to move forward with the lies and labels stuck on me, backed and encouraged by the most powerful entertainment company in the world. I am grateful someone has come to my defense in such a powerful way and look forward to clearing my name. Thank you to all the people who have supported me and made your voices heard. I pray God bless each and every one of you with love, Gina Carano. And then of course, you know, if you've got inquiries or other interesting information that paints Disney in a very poor light, she's got a lawsuit a specific email set up. And as you can see, ooh, this is getting good traction because this story right here is going to be the first of many terrible behind the scenes stories that Disney Lucasfilm and Bob Iger is going to have to deal with throughout 2024. And then also you throw on the added benefits of Elon Musk being involved. And then also with a very terrible earnings call that is very much coming out tomorrow, it's going to be a tough 2024. And quite frankly, you get what you deserve. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.